Hey guys, it's Miss Rachel. I am so glad that you're back with me again today. I hope you guys have been having a great week at school and that everybody's doing well and everybody's healthy. So today I brought with me this. Ooh. Um, and I'm sure most of you all know what that is. It's a hammer, of course. Um, and you might be like, Miss Rachel, why did you bring a hammer? Well, just start to name some things that you can use a hammer to do. Like, maybe build a tree house. What else can you think of? I'm sure you guys can think of lots of different things you can use a hammer to, to build with. Um, but could I use a hammer to make a fancy sculpture out of glass or something like that? No, that would be the wrong tool for the job. Uh, could I use it to fix a window? No. So a hammer has its certain jobs that it's good at doing, just like we talked the first week about all the different tools in the kitchen. They all have their job that they're meant to do. Uh, but here's what I want you to think about today is what can you do with a hammer for Jesus? You might say, well, that's not something I would ever use or would think to use to do something to help Jesus. But what if you used a hammer to help fix somebody's house after the hurricane? Or maybe use it to build a ramp uh, for somebody's house that maybe has to be in a wheelchair now. There's all kinds of things that we could use a hammer for that would help Jesus and Jesus' friends. Um, and just like the hammer, we all have certain things that we're good at and we have certain things we're not good at. And today's story, we're going to look at somebody who had a special gift. And we'll talk about what his gift was. It's something he was very good at doing. And let's see, as I tell you some of his story, let's see if you can recognize what that gift is. We're, this is about a man named Barnabas. Have you ever heard of him before? We don't talk about him very much, but he was actually a pretty important guy. The Bible tells us in, in the book of Acts, it tells us all about some of Jesus' followers. Now, the last few weeks, we've been talking about some people who followed God in the Old Testament. Um, people like David and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and several others. Now we're fast forwarding all the way past when Jesus was here on earth and all the way to his followers after he had gone back to heaven. Now, one of his followers, you guys know because we talked about him at VBS. It was a man named Saul. And Saul had been um, running around after the Christians trying to arrest them and, and hurt them. Until one day, there was a bright light and he got blinded and he heard Jesus call out to him, Saul, why are you doing this to me? And Saul cried out, Lord, who are you? And he said, I'm Jesus, the one you're hurting. And so from that day, Saul became a believer in Jesus. His whole life changed and all of a sudden things were different for him. So I was using that paper to mark my Bible because you see, we were way over here from the last few weeks. Now we're way in the back. We're in the book of Acts. And we're going to start in chapter 11. And I've got mine open here if you want to find yours. We're going to be looking at verses 25 and 26. When Saul became a believer, uh, he had a problem. He had a reputation. People knew him as someone who hunted Christians. Now he was a Christian. And so he had a little bit of a problem, but Barnabas, who is who we're really talking about today, was a good friend to Saul. He went with Saul to the leaders in Jerusalem to tell him what had happened and to be there to support his friend. And so later on, um, Barnabas was put in charge of a church. He went to a town called Antioch, and he started telling people all about Jesus, and people started to believe. And the church grew and grew and grew, and it grew so big until Barnabas needed help himself. And so Barnabas, it tells us in um, Acts chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, it says, Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to search for Saul. That was Saul's hometown. And when Barnabas found him, he brought Saul to Antioch. For a whole year, they met with the church and taught large numbers. The disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. Did you know that? Did you know that's when we got our name, what we call ourselves? Christians means little Christ. They were trying to make fun of us, but that's actually something we hope to be. We want to be like Jesus. That's not an insult. So we want to be like little Christs. 
So while Saul and Barnabas were in Antioch, they heard that there was going to be a famine back in Judea, in Jerusalem, in that area. And a famine is when people don't have enough food. The food doesn't grow and how it usually does, and so people have nothing to eat. And so the people in Saul and Barnabas' church raised money, and Saul and Barnabas took that money to the church in Jerusalem and said, here's, here's some money to help to help get people food when it's hard to find food and it's very expensive. So while they were there, God spoke to the people who were in the leaders of the church and said, I want Saul and Barnabas to go to other places too. I don't want them to go back to Antioch. I want them to go other places. So send Barnabas and Saul to do work for me in other places. And so the church prayed for Saul and Barnabas, and then they sent them off to do the work of missionaries. Now, we also know from VBS, a missionary is someone who travels around to tell people about Jesus. And so Saul and Barnabas began to travel all over the place to tell people about Jesus. And everywhere they went, people believed in Jesus. And also everywhere they went, there were people who did not like that they were talking about Jesus. And so they had problems sometimes, but they would stand up and God would help them get through it and they would go on to the next place and, and just on and on. And eventually one day they got to a place where they saw a man who couldn't walk. And this man, um, Saul, told the man to stand up. And all of a sudden God made that man well. So you can see the kinds of things that were happening. It was very exciting. Lots of things were going on. Well, Saul and Barnabas told so many people about Jesus, and then they eventually went back to the church at Antioch. They kind of made a full circle, and they went back to their home church. And then they told the people there about their trip, and that was Acts 14, verse 27, and just the first part of the verse. It says, after they arrived and gathered the church together, they reported everything God had done. So they got to stand in front of all these people and say, listen to what happened while we were traveling. Look what God did. Listen to how many people now believe in Jesus. All of that just because Saul and Barnabas were willing to do what God asked them to do. Now, God had a plan for Saul and Barnabas. He had jobs for them to do. He has jobs for you to do. Now, Barnabas' gift was something we call encouragement. It basically means he was a very good friend, but he didn't let people just say, oh, I can't do this. He would come up with them and say, let's do it. We can get it done. So, matter of fact, Barnabas' name means the son of encouragement. What a great name to go by, isn't it? Wouldn't you like to be known as, as uh, wouldn't you like to be known for being kind or loving or that you had a, a, a nice personality? or that you were just good? Wouldn't that be something you would be, like to be known for? And so Barnabas got the name for being an encourager. That's a great thing. And, and I'll tell you, people who do a lot of work for Jesus need encouragement. They need people to say, you're doing a great job and I can help you with things. So Saul and Barnabas did a lot of things together because God put them together to work together because he knew Saul could do things well on his own and Barnabas could do some things well, but together they were even better. Now, eventually we're going to hear how Saul later on changed his name to Paul. It hadn't happened at this point yet. Well, by the end of our story it had, but not with, when he was traveling around with Barnabas, he was still going by the name Saul. Eventually he changed it to Paul. I know some of you knew that. Um, and Saul and Barnabas did a lot of work together that I don't think they could have done by themselves. Uh, now, sometimes that's true for you and I as well. Sometimes God gives us something he wants us to do or he asks us to follow us somehow and we say, oh, I can't do that by myself. I, I don't have the money or I don't have the time or I don't have the talent for that. But then you might know somebody who could help. It might be mom or dad or it could be another friend, somebody you know at church, um, just I know I've had lots of different kinds of people who have come up and said, I would like to help you because I know this is something I'm good at. Um, I have a friend, a special friend, who is very good at encouraging me. And I think we all need people who come alongside us and help us when it's difficult. 
Now, like I said, you might have your mom and dad probably already do that for you. You might have friends that do it. Or maybe there's somebody out there that you don't know yet who is designed to be a Barnabas for you. Or maybe you are supposed to be a Barnabas for somebody else. So I have a challenge for you this week. I want you to try to find somebody that you can encourage. Now, it could just be you go up to them and saying, I think you're doing a great job. Or you might make them a card, or you might uh, send them a video, or whatever it is that you can do. Find somebody that you can encourage. I want you to do it, not mom and dad. I want you to find somebody to encourage, okay? You can say that you, like your teacher, you can say they're doing a great job at reading time that you like, or something. It doesn't have to be anything specific. It, just find something that you see somebody doing and encourage them. Tell them they're doing a good job and if somebody needs help, offer to help them. That's what Barnabas did. He was a great friend for Saul and you can see they worked for many years together and they did a lot of good work for Jesus. Uh, so let's all try to be Barnabases this week, okay? We're not going to call you that because that would get really confusing. But let's try to do that and to try to do a good job of encouraging other people. All right, if you came to church this morning, you would get this in your bag, uh, and it's got all kinds of things about um, Saul or Paul and Barnabas, uh, because I told you not a lot of people know about Barnabas, and it was really hard for me to find things about just Barnabas, because everything was about him and Paul together. So there's some activities in there, uh, especially something for you older kids that it's a code to break to find out um, something that happened to them, okay? I hope you guys have a great week. I am praying for you. I love you, and hopefully we'll get to see each other soon. Bye.